Ready, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And yes, it is Tuesday on the show, and you know what that means? Well, we have a lot to talk about. Three weeks, less than three weeks, until WrestleMania. And we have a lot of matches announced for the show thus far. Ten of them. And right now we only know what night three of them will be on. But I think they'll start announcing what night each match will be on as we get going here. And we probably still have several matches still to be announced. There's going to be something involving the women who are not currently booked on the show. Which I don't believe will be a battle royal, but we'll find out soon enough. And others as well. So we can talk about the WrestleMania lineup as well as Raw last night. Which did have a lot of talking. There was a lot of talking on the show last night. But in terms of building up WrestleMania, I thought it was a very good show. We got NXT tonight with a full lineup. We've got Dynamite tomorrow with five announced segments. And Rampage. There's actually seven segments because Dynamite will be followed immediately by Rampage tomorrow. Three-hour block of AEW programming. We got SmackDown on Friday with five matches. And uh, plenty more. Also, Becky Lynch, now a U.S. citizen. Matt Hardy at Raw. We'll tell you about AEW and WWE wrestlers attending each other's shows. We got Shayna Baszler's opponent for Bloodsport, who is a TNA wrestler, in fact. We got ratings for Rampage Collision and SmackDown. Stardom. Got new names announced for the Stardom show, which is coming up April 4th, including two AEW wrestlers going to be on the show. And two new members of the Rhodes family are about to debut in pro wrestling. So a lot to get into here today. Mike Sempervivi joins us after the break. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4W online at gmail.com. And F4W online on threads, Instagram, and Cameo. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, how's your back? Because uh, you. Mate, my ass is so bad. <laughs> Can I show like a little bit of it? Like, I won't show... You show more than that? I'm not going to show you my cheek, right? But like, <laughs> bro, look how bad oh, that wow. is. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, 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 that spot was pretty sucked insane. sucked so yeah. much. I want to make sure that you're okay, obviously. Uh, the second question I actually had is kind of your mindset now. You are now full-time U.S.-based wrestler, which is you, you've never done that. You basically you've done, obviously the Indies in England, Japan. I mean, you've done matches over like, here. Yeah, just dip my toes into it. Yeah, but now you're actually going to be going on American TV every week. Mm-hmm. What is your mindset about how you kind of almost have? Do you have to change your style? Or you're just going to be like, you know what? I'm going to be Will Osprey, and I, I'm going to make the basically the TV adapt to me. I mean, the one thing I'm doing my best to do is I'm trying my best not to swear. Like, God, oh, that is so hard. It's well, like, here you can. You feel free to no, no, off the air. I mean, here, yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, FCC. Oh, is no. yeah, but, like, <laughs> but I was just kind of like, mate, like, even like cutting promos now, like that, that's like a real hard task for me to do because I've never done it like into an American audience. A lot of our stuff in Japan was always backstage. So like I, I knew when I wanted to make the jump, I was like really, I'm really trying hard at that and really trying like to learn that style because I'm all new at this. Like everything that you see right in front of you is all going to be like me experiencing something completely new. But like my mindset right now is like I have been screaming down the lens of a Jap- Japanese camera that I am the best in the world. And right now, I've never done this. I've never been full time in America, uh, and it's it's a lot of things, but it's mainly an anxiety. It's an anxiety of like for ages. Like I know when the bell rings, like I, I can do it, but like it's not just the bell ringing anymore. It's about showing personality. It's about connecting with the crowds, and like that's my main focus now. Is just, just like I want to show my personality because I'm a thing. I'm a little bit of a cheeky bugger, so like I like to I like to show that off and like. This is going to be like a, a really rough road, not rough road, but it's going to be like, it's going to be hard to like work out these navigations, but like, I'm ready, man. Like, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to be completely vulnerable out there and just like, if, if I mess up, I mean, shut you up to me. Like, I, I don't mind. Like, I'll, I'm here to learn and like, I'm not, I'm not going to get it out right away, but like, it, like I'm doing my best and I think like, honestly, out there today, I think if that's the, the first thing that I've got, like... <laughs> Everyone's fucked, eh?
Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also WrestlingObserver.com. I guess I do have to say I was I was surprised today to learn that Becky Lynch just now officially became a citizen of the United States. You're surprised? Well, yeah. I mean, just in the sense that, I mean, she's been here forever. I can remember... I have to go back and find out what year this was. But I think it was probably like 2006, 2007. So we're talking almost 20 years ago. Do you know I used to go watch Becky Lynch wrestle in an auto? Uh, it was like an like a, uh, auto garage bay. Like it was just, there were these shows that, that ran in, uh, I guess it would have been Renton, Washington, a little south of Renton, on on uh, 167, I think is the highway, and they, they were just like it was a it was one of those buildings where there's all these you know bay doors and everything, and you open it up and it was like all of these auto repair places or whatever, and and in one of them, like once a month they would run wrestling shows, and uh, just their wrestling Rebecca Quinn, and always teamed with Old Rizik. Who had a thousand matches with back in the day, and I mean that was all, that was almost twenty years ago. I would go I watch her wrestle in that little garage, and then like she got injured, and we thought like her career was over. Yeah, that's the wild part. Is so many years ago, it looked like she would never be able to wrestle again, and that obviously it was not the case. So now here she is, thirty-seven years old, and she is now a U.S. citizen. I wonder if she had to sing the national anthem. Didn't Tom say that that's what his wife had to do? It's possible. They made her, like, sing the national anthem. That can't possibly be true. Can anyone else confirm the, that? The Pledge of Allegiance? I don't know, man. I mean, my father is a citizen now. He's been for a long time. But I, I have to, I'm going to have to ask him, did you have to sing the national anthem when you got your citizenship? That's what Tom claimed. It's possible. This person no says idea. they recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, I can understand that, makes, that. Yeah, I can make some sense. But singing the the wow. Hey, hmm. Ireland's loss is America's gain. Well, I mean, she's still an Irish citizen, I'm sure. I mean, my children apparently can Dual can be uh, they they're going to be uh, uh, Italian citizens. They've never been there in their lives. Wait, wait, wait a I, second. What? Well, apparently, it's something about you know. Italian grandparents citizens? or parents or something. Who in your family is Italian? Everyone on my wife's side. Are you kidding me? Where have you been? She's but Clearly there are she... no family reunions. <laughs> Crying <laughs> out loud. We got Morellis and... There ain't no... Uh... Anyway. How are they going to become Italian citizens? Is your, I don't like, was know. Was your wife born in Italy? I know. Were the kids there's, born there's in Italy? all sorts no. of paperwork that needs to be filled out, but apparently they can. Huh. So... So it, literally, my wife as well. So everyone will be an Italian citizen except me. They're fixing to get out of here, I think. Well. <laughs> Matt Hardy attended a Raw last night. It was in Raleigh, North Carolina. And, Raleigh. Uh, <laughs> Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh? Raleigh. Raleigh. <laughs> Would you stop trying to correct me? What, do you think you're Italian now? Wale. It was well, Raleigh, you know. North Carolina. <laughs> and the point of this is... This wouldn't even have been a story at all, except... But Rebby Hardy exists. His wife decided to put all this footage <laughs> on social media. I will say one thing. Whatever you want to say about Rebby... She's got energy. This is a lady who does what she wants. Yes, she does. <laughs> She's just going to do what she wants. And so it's kind of a thing, because she posted video on social media. But, you know, it's a, it's a new business, and, you know... They don't necessarily want people to be on camera, although it does happen every now and then. There was that famous incident where Britt Baker was in the in the audience for uh, one of Adam Cole's NXT matches, and the the director just like, oh, there's a good looking lady. Let's film her. They put her on TV, and they claim they had no idea it was Britt Baker, <laughs> but she's right there on television. What a rib! And I think uh, wasn't Buddy? Didn't they show Buddy Matthews next to? Uh, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, mm -hmm. a little while ago. I uh, see. I thought you were going all the way back to TNA days, where the Highlander uh, 
what was his name? Robbie or whatever it was. That guy got in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, big But time. things are different now as far as like visiting. So I got a list here, and this is not a complete list, but when Cody made his WWE return, QT and Aaron Solo were there, and they were backstage. They were backstage at the show when he made his debut. Then when uh, we had the Royal Rumble, we had Mark Henry, QT, and Starks all backstage. Uh, Thunder Rosa apparently was at the, uh, the Royal Rumble under a mask. That was sneaky. She wore a mask. Hmm. And then at the uh, Boston show, Bailey and Naomi were both there. And Tamina. <laughs> but they did have to uh, alert WWE that they were going to that one. Lex Luger obviously was at Sting's retirement. Kevin Nash was not. And uh, the big difference is that uh, the video was out that uh, Rebby posted. But, <laughs> hey, m- you know, Matt Hardy's in the middle of contract negotiations. And we were told that WWE did not give him comps. He got comps from a local skincare doctor and uh, decided to go to the show. Wait. So there you go. All right. Take Bye. care of your skin, Mike. Don't question Matt Hardy. That's, you know, you got to keep it moisturized. Yes. So uh, I would say that this story is largely much ado about nothing. But it was uh, it was talked about quite a bit yesterday. Well, at least it's a little bit of something where... You know, Charlotte Flair was shown, I think, a couple of times. It's the CMLL show. I mean, at this point, with Vince being gone, you know, it's time to let the adults, you know, some more adults try to get in and get their opinions, which is, you know, it's okay. Again, we don't have to actually say anything about that wrestler on our show or whatever they can be see it's not like it's any sort of big deal at all i mean you know it's crazy unless you're using a trademark name on the other show and and pointing it out or something like that doesn't matter and you know another thing i know that there are people that they they want to believe that nothing has changed wwe is still exactly as it always was but it very much is not and Shayna baszler First off, a WWE wrestler is going to be working one of the independent shows around the area over WrestleMania weekend. I don't know if you guys remember or not, but there was a period where WWE wanted to like crush all of these shows so there would be no other shows running around WrestleMania weekend. They wanted the weekend entirely to themselves. And now, not only is that not what's happening, but Shayna is going to be wrestling, fighting, wrestling, uh, on Josh Barnett's Bloodsport 10. And she will be facing Masha Slamovich, who was a former two-time TNA Knockouts champion. So obviously, you know, WWE, I don't want to say they have a working agreement because people get mad, but clearly WWE and TNA are on good terms. And if they come up with an idea, you know, they're, they're, they will work together. And so a WWE wrestler is not only wrestling a TNA wrestler on a Josh Barnett show, but, you know, there are other... uh, Nick Nemeth is on the show, who is working for, I think, everybody right now. Johnny Bloodsport, Johnny TV, and AEW is working the show. He's facing Josh Barnett, Minoru Suzuki, and Royce Isaacs. (laughs) Yeah, Nick Nemeth is facing Mike Bailey. And apparently there are going to be other WWE talents uh, that will be there as well. Oh, give me filthy Tom Waller and Chad Gable, please. Hey. Please, Lord. All I know is is things have changed. And whatever you want to say about whoever, you know, WWE is a lot more open to, hey, you know, do the blood sports show. You know, we're one step Work on a show to. with people who work with AEW. That's the, actually the bigger surprise, to be honest. That's what I can't wait for. Because technically, Blake Christian is under an ROH contract, but he's been the GCW champion for a long time. We have now opened up the doors for finally Omas to show up at the showboat in Atlantic City and beat Blake Christian, and Omas can be the GCW champion. Scrotal is here, (laughs) if that is his real name. Says WWE is friendly with groups who pose no threat to them. Well, Scrotalis... Nobody poses any threat to WWE right now. So that would basically be every other promotion on Earth. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Um, Scrolling Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, 
They're saying this was the match of the year. You mm -hmm. went to catch that. How are you feeling? Your first official match at AGW. They're already calling it match of the year. How are you feeling? I mean, I've got a lot to top now, haven't I? Like, I mean, look, once again, like, I, I can't do those type of matches without a great, like, partner to do it with. Takeshita is every bit as good as Will Ospreay. It's just on that night, I was just better, pure and simple. But like, look at the move that I had to put him away with. Uh, the Tiger Driver, I keep saying this so much, man. The Tiger Driver 91 is the most dangerous move in wrestling. It is not, it was used back in the day by Mr. Haru Masawa. And I said that right, didn't I? I'm yeah. sure I did. But like, <laughs> you know, I'm actually, I forgot that wrong, didn't I? Be like, no! <laughs> but like, it was one of the most dangerous moves in wrestling. And like, some guys like, some guys are able to like, kind of figure out a way of getting out of it. But like, it's a complete pressure on your neck, man. It is just, it's a sheer drop. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised in like the five months time, like people will be like, hey, you can't do that move anymore. But there's like, this is what I bring to the table, man. Like, I'm one of the most dangerous professional wrestlers in the world. Look, I am a lovely man. I, I will walk your mum across the street any day of the week. I will happily give you a cuddle if you're ever feeling sad. I, I'm always a good shoulder to cry on, and I look after you to the day I die. But I am one mean motherfucker when I want to be. Like, that's all I care about, man. So, like, if this is... So, this is the first pay-per-view of AEW's year for 2024. Right, so we got Dynasty, probably got Forbidden Door, we've got uh, Double, All nothing. In, Double Nothing, All In, All Out, uh, Full Gear, no, Wrestle Dream, Full Gear, and World's End. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the first right. one. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Like I said, the most dangerous man in wrestling right now, bro. Yes, sir. Um, D Dowdy, uh, 104.5 FM, WCCG. Uh, Will, question for you. Um, throughout the match, there were a lot of aha moments, a lot of momentum shifting. How were you able to stay focused and adapt to, to catch this offense? Uh, a lot of it has just been like, uh, experience over in Japan, dude. Like, I mean, once again, I, I have watched Takeshi, like I was a fan of him. I saw him live at 2019, and uh, one of my mates at the time went, God damn, he's sexy. And I was like, <laughs> so I was sitting next to him, I was just like, hey, you, you're all right, calm down, mate. But, yeah, he is, isn't he? But uh, it, when it, well, those type of matches are happening, like, I just kind of like remain uh, from my training what I did in Japan, because with that, it's, it's endurance based. You have to keep your timing right, you have to keep your energy levels down like not get too freaked out in those moments because like there's a lot of like heavy shots so the moment you start freaking out and breathing heavy and like not uh not uh creating space from your opponent that's when you're going to find yourself in like difficult positions bless you uh but for me like it, it's not a, a rodeo uh, it's not a ride that i haven't ridden before uh, i'm very much aware of like my um i think my benefit throughout a lot of these guys is um, my my gas is kind of good uh, uh, my breathing my, my cardio that's a funny kind of thing you see he did a lot of brain damage uh, boom and I'm like <laughs>
She's literally spoofing someone on the show she's on. Are we going to get movie-level drama tonight again between Ilya Dragunov and Tony D'Angelo? We have to. Well, we'll hear from Tony D, so probably. And we will also hear from Oba Femi. So a lot of hearing tonight (laughs) on the show. A lot lot of talking on this. It's like a hearing test. We will hear from all these people. Let's be honest, Brian, like you've been talking about. You know, the NXT is supposed to get you ready for the main roster, and what are you going to be doing on the main roster? Lots of talking. So you Well, yeah, we'll get to it. Raw later. Then we've got Dynamite and Rampage back-to-back on Wednesday night. Christian versus Copeland, I quit for the TNT title. Eddie Kingston versus Okada. Deanna and Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm and Mariah May. Jericho versus Hook. We'll hear from Mercedes Monet. That's another person we're going to hear from. Also, Best Friends versus Kyle Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs in a tag team tournament wild card match. If they win, they get into the tournament. These brackets. And Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue in a street fight, which probably will be the main event of Rampage at the uh, three hour mark. So uh, that's the lineup. And then we also have a bunch of matches announced for SmackDown and Raw. Friday SmackDown has the Cody Rhodes Roman Reigns face to face. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson versus Grayson Waller and Austin Theory in a tournament match, qualifying tournament match. Street Profits versus Authors of Pain, also in a qualifying tournament match. Rey Mysterio versus Santos Escobar, which hopefully gets more time than that Dragon Lee Santos Escobar from this past Friday. Mm. And Io Sky versus Naomi. We don't have an update on Asuka. And, uh, like, I didn't even know she got hurt. But I heard she got hurt. And so I went back and I watched it. And I rewound this thing over and over and over and over. She wasn't even in the match. No. And I was like, how in the world did she get hurt? And I don't know if this is the spot, but somebody sent me, from the company, sent me a video saying this is what happened. And what it was... It's, like, impossible to believe. It's, like, she was, like, kneeling on the apron, and she just jumped off and landed on the ground. That was it. And, uh, man, I hope she's all right, because otherwise, I don't know what's going to go on. But she was limping around. She couldn't do anything. Couldn't put weight on the leg. Nothing. So, uh, that sucks. And I've heard nothing on Bailey. Apparently, Bailey is fine, which I don't even know how. Io moonsaulted her right in the face, but apparently she's okay. But I guess we'll see who is on SmackDown Friday. Well, I guess worst case scenario with Asuka is you could put um, Dakota Kai in that spot for the tag titles if need be, if she's going to be out and miss time. You do have that option at least. I'm if, now, does if Hank and Tank defeat Anderson and Gallows, do they get their match on smackdown to that no it's a different match? tournament bro oh i'm sorry different tournament then raw next week at cm punk appearing ricochet jd mcdonough andrade is gonna have a match that will be viewed by the judgment day and ivy nile versus the diabolical candace Lorray. she is a horrible person now she is yes terrible at least in storyline we got new japan cup it's down to yoda suji and haruki goto which is tomorrow, actually probably late tonight. And uh, winner gets a shot at Naito at Sakura Genesis, April 6th. Who's winning? I'm going with Yoda Suji, but I'm just happy that it's Suji and Goto in the finals because if you've seen any of this tournament, a lot of it has not been good at all, including everything that's got to do with the House of Torture, which led its way all the way through into the semifinals, so... You know, at least the final makes sense. You could do Goto, I guess, if you wanted to. But to me, if he's going to win, then he's got to go beat Naito, gets his gold watch for his career, then you maybe transition the belt to somebody else. Honestly, Yoda Suji probably should win, though, and get his shot. And again, you can have that dynamic with LIJ, the issues with Naito and LIJ, if you wanted to that way. But... I, I don't know. What do you think? Well, Goto's talked about his his father passing away. Yeah, and he's and we lost Finley too. We don't know what David Finley if he may have made it to the finals because of you know. Well, yeah, we, we actually have no idea. But I think that I think that Goto is going to win the cup and lose to Naito. 
Oh, that's his whole career. Yes, and I think that the reason that Suji is not winning the cup is I think there is a chance he might beat Naito, but I don't think they're doing it on April 6th at Sakura Genesis. <laughs> why not? I think that will be further down the road. I hate to say They it, just gave not. Naito the title. I mean... I know, but the whole story of that and it's was probably years. his last run, to be honest. And, and you're right, and... and... I want to have some hope for that, but the reality is is a lot of that story was for him to win the belt at the Tokyo Dome and looking at the landscape, unless it's going to be just a series of outsiders, and he does have that match coming up with John Moxley, you know, that, that in you know, Naito against somebody is going to be a big match, but he can barely wrestle. Uh, again, this is, it's going to be an interesting year for New Japan in general, but also if Naito is able to actually hold up throughout the entire thing and where we're at with him by the end of the year, because I know a lot of people are sad that Tanahashi has gone away. Well, you know, I got to be honest, Naito is not far behind him. Let's say that Finley was going to the finals against Yoda Suji. Mm-hmm. Well, I could see him winning and then going yeah. and losing a Naito. Absolutely. Well, well, he's out. And so uh, someone else has to win and then go lose to Naito. May as well be Goto. That's my uh, the, the, that's the my argument. Prediction. The argument against that is why not give Sushi a New Japan Cup victory here? And because I don't think they and, want to beat him. I, I know. Well, that's the thing. Go ahead and go full bore with Yoda Suji. I mean, I, again, you you can Suji losing to Goto. I think because of the story and because of what's happened, I think it would be more palatable than if he would have lost to Finley, but. You got to be careful with how many L's you're dropping around Yoda Suji's neck because he's one of the only guys that really gets a hell of a reaction from the crowd now, especially when it comes to all that House of Torture stuff and Bullet Club stuff. Well, you know, we've also got uh, some ratings notes here. Not much to talk about except everything was down. Rampage, 327,000 and a .11. We had Collision, which, keep in mind, was the follow-up to the debut of Mercedes, 393 and a .12. So that's not all that great. You know, Shibata and Danielson may not have sold any tickets or moved any ratings, but you really don't know because you you didn't try. And then the big one is, uh, golly. You know, Dave says The Rock can do whatever he wants, and The Rock decided to open up SmackDown. And we literally were talking about this all week. And we talked about it with Mercedes. Because two weeks ago, The Rock closed the show, or he opened the show, and everybody tuned in for a segment, and then they lost a bunch of viewers. And then the week after, they saved him till the end, and the show did much better because you made people wait. That's the exact argument we had for Mercedes. Don't open the show with her. Make the people wait. Well, this past Friday, Rock comes out to open the show again. And the exact same thing happened. People tuned out afterwards, and the show did 2.34 million, the lowest audience since February 23rd, and a .68, which uh, is still uh, pretty good in 18 to 49. But as far as audience, like they lost, they lost a hundred thousand or something like that. I don't know, whatever. But you know, it, it, there is a difference here. There is a difference between AEW and and WWE, and that is. One of these two organizations has already signed all of their television deals, and the other has not. So it doesn't matter, as The Rock would say, if SmackDown does a great number or not. They've already signed all their TV deals. Now, when it comes to AEW, they have signed no TV deals. So to me, you know, pay-per-view, great. That's awesome. Make your money off pay-per-view. Sell your pay-per-view buys. But these AEW television shows, you got to do everything in your power to raise everything as high as you can during this negotiation period. It doesn't help for things to be falling, 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 which they are in in AEW. I mean, WWE, it was like, it was almost, it was almost silly uh, before their last negotiation, not this one. Like, they were down, 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 down. And they had like one great year, and it was a negotiation year. They got a great number. So... It's amazing how that works. But your contract year for anything, it's always amazing what what can, what can happen when the effort goes in. Start of American Dream 2024 at the ECW Arena, former ECW Arena. Mariah May and Willow Nightingale both announced for the show. We'll talk more about that. Everything else after the break, Observer Live.
East Elliot Greenberg with Inside the Ropes magazine. What's up, Keith? Th this is a very historic night tonight, and there were a number of legends in the arena. Uh, were you able at some point to slow down enough to glean any knowledge or at least inspiration from those legends? So this honestly is, I hope I'm allowed to say it, but like, so I, I was like, ah, ah, backstage, the doctor was like, all right, on the table, we'll just put some ice on your butt, and like, I was like laying on the tables, ah, <laughs> and then like, Ric Flair walked in, and I was like, ah, and stood up, and I was like, yes. <laughs> And he, was just, and he said, uh, you are everything I've heard of and more. You are one of the best wrestlers in the world. And that coming from him is just like, thank you, Mr. Ric Flair. Thank you very much. Cause he's a standard. Like, I, I know like, I know sometimes I get forgotten about, but like every like little bit of wrestling has some like inspiration from Ric Flair, man. So like the fact that he was able to like just come over and just go like, you're the fucking man. It's like, man, amazing. Like brilliant stuff. I'm a bit of a two-parter. Uh, Tony, you were present for a pretty crazy match that Will had a couple weeks ago. I'm interested to hear like what goes through your mind when somebody who you've already invested in is having a, a, a match like that, which is incredible, but also uh, risky. And Will, when we had spoke prior, you, you communicated how important it was for you to still be able to live in the UK. Uh, how important was that to coming here, and, and what kind of schedule will you be on moving forward? Well, I, I was a tremendous match. That was an amazing, amazing, amazing match for Will to finish up in Rev Pro. And after a great run in New Japan and Rev Pro, I thought Will versus Michael Oku was a great match. And I was really blown away, not only by the quality of the wrestling, but also uh, really the quality of people. I got to meet Will Ospreay's family for the first time, which was really cool. Was the, so sweet, dude. You're the man. And uh, the, the great things he said afterwards, it was just really kind. And uh, I thought the way he helped uh, really set up his debut in AEW and also paid tribute to the great fans in the UK that helped him get to this place. It was really a great thing and it was great to be there. And of course, the match took a big toll, I think physically, but knowing it's Will Ospreay, you know, I had a high confidence he was going to be here, be ready for revolution. And uh, he was everything we would have expected. The match was everything we would have expected. I thought Ospreay versus Takeshi had delivered, revolution delivered. And again, I think Will Ospreay in AEW fits like a glove, as you're seeing here tonight uh, firsthand. Thank you, Sean. I'm basically Wolverine, bro, but I'll be fine in like a couple <laughs> of days. Just heal up. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. No Mike Semper BB, he had to go. He had business to attend to. So I'm on my own. Very lonely here in this, well, this empty studio that I'm always in by myself. But anyway, if you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. So we were talking about the Stardom Show and Mariah May being announced for the show and Willow Nightingale being announced for the show. American Dream 2024, April 4th, former ECW Arena. And when it comes to AEW wrestlers wrestling on the stardom and, well, New Japan shows, uh, someone in the chat did bring up something that people have been talking about for the last couple of days, which is, could John Moxley beat Naito and win the IWGP title? In their match that's coming up. I think it's Windy City Riot. And. I mean I got to say. Like when they first announced the match. I, I did not think that he was. there was He was going to win the title. But. A lot of people have noted. Well how come. And I asked this exact same question. Why is Moxley not in. This AW tournament for the tag titles. Why are Moxley and Claudio not in this match. Because it doesn't make any sense at all. They beat FTR at the pay-per-view. 
They not only beat them clean in the middle, but they both had them in submissions at the same time. I mean, you couldn't have a more decisive win. To the point where, when we were discussing, well, what are they going to do with Sting and Darby and the Young Bucks? I said, well, you know, if they uh, if Sting wins, which I thought he should, they got to vacate the titles, and then we do a tournament, and I already know what it's going to come down to. It'll come down to BCC versus FTR. FTR beats BCC, wins the wins the titles. That was my prediction for the whole thing. And then, you know, the the brackets are coming out Thursday. The brackets are coming out Friday. Turns out it was Friday. And they come out, and first off, they're just the wackiest brackets you've ever seen. There's 10 teams in a tournament that starts with the quarterfinals. So we have two matches featuring four teams. Then we have two matches, but we only know two teams. The other two teams are determined by wild card matches. It's just like, what? What are these brackets? But on top of that, where in God's name is the Blackpool Combat Club? Not there. And I don't think Moxley has an injury. And we've seen Claudio wrestle. He clearly doesn't have an injury. We just saw Brian Danielson wrestling. I mean, they've they've got other plans for Brian Danielson, but why why are Claudio and Moxley not in this tournament? And that's when people said, well, maybe Moxley isn't in the tournament because uh, he's going to win that IWGP title. Don't want to beat him. And that's when I thought, you know what? I mean, that's as good a that is as good an explanation as anything because I can't think of anything else. That would explain why John Moxley is not in this tournament. So uh, I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see. But I, I certainly would not rule it out. I mean, I would not rule it out. Two members of the Rhodes family preparing to begin their story, which assuredly will need to be finished someday. Dustin Rhodes announced his nephews, Wyatt and Wayne Rhodes, make their pro debuts this weekend at the Rhodes Wrestling Academy Showcase event. They will wrestle as the Texas Outlaws, borrowing the name from their grandfather's tag team with Dick Murdoch. Oh, man, Dick Murdoch. You can say whatever you want about him as a human being, and there's plenty to say. But as a worker, oh my God, that guy. They will compete for the RWA Tag Titles. Two out of three falls match on Sunday. Dustin Rhodes asked people to please tune in. Apparently you can watch it on YouTube, the RWA YouTube channel. They are the sons to Dusty's daughter, former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader Kristen Ditto. She was the one that was mentioned in that uh, uh, promo with The Rock. And uh, she said, "By My most favorite job of all is being mommy to my boys, Dalton and Dylan. Dalton Wayne and Dylan Wyatt. We live a happy life at DK Ranch in the Hill County of Lake Travis. So they're debuting this weekend, and uh, they ain't win those titles. That's my prediction. Dustin's going to be like, nope. Got to work your way up, kids. But maybe not. We'll see. All right, we had the Raw show. And before we get into the highs and lows of Raw, we do have WrestleMania coming up, and we have 10 matches announced. So night one... We have got the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth. Night two, we have Roman against Cody for the Undisputed title and Seth versus Drew McIntyre for the world title. These are the only matches that we know which night they're on at this point. At this point, it really doesn't matter. They pretty much sold all the tickets for WrestleMania. But, you know, people are on the fence. Or those rare people. I think, you know, they're going to put like 60, 65,000 people in each night. And I forget what the stats were, but there was like a thousand people each night that only bought tickets for one show. Like the vast, vast majority just buy tickets for both shows, so it doesn't matter. But WrestleMania 40 also has Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch for the world title. Becky did not lose to uh, Nia Jax. EO Sky versus Bailey for the women's title. We've got Gunther. Versus Sami Zayn at this point for the Intercontinental title. And I think it's going to be a one-on-one match. I would not be stunned if they added Chad Gable. 
but I actually don't. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, then we've got Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus, at this point, DIY, Awesome Truth, New Day, and we'll get the last two teams from SmackDown coming up here soon. Logan Paul defends against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, triple threat match. And Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso, LA Knight versus AJ Styles. So that's the lineup, and that is a total of 10 matches. And I don't think we're going to do five matches each night. So my guess would be that we may have as many as six matches uh, still to be announced for WrestleMania. And as noted, there will be a match involving all the women who are not on the show. And probably some sort of match. We'll do an Andre the Giant Battle Royal for the men. I guess we'll see. But some of the highlights from last night, a lot of talking. And I will say that, you know, the people who were the best talkers obviously got the most time. And the people who aren't exactly, you know, promo wizards, uh, Jay and Jimmy Uso, for example, I mean, they got their promo and they, uh, you know, got their time. So Jimmy and Jay did a promo, hype it up their match, and... uh you know, nothing much to it. Jay is sad that his brother is gone, but Jimmy said, listen, I'm not the one that left the bloodline. You did. You left. You wanted to go become a top star, top merch seller on Raw. You went off to become tag team champions without me. Who left who? And uh, as someone pointed out, I- I'd have to go back, but I'm pretty sure that Jimmy actually left the bloodline first, but then came back, and then Jay split off. So actually, Jimmy was the one that left his brother. We had Creed's versus DIY qualifying ladder match, or qualifying match for the ladder match, and this was a good match, but you had to watch the whole thing to get to the good part, because the first part, like early, it was just showing the Creed's all of the impressive physical feats that they could do, but when they actually got to the big moves and the near falls at the end, I mean, really good match, really good heat, DIY won. The storyline is, all the time they've been with WWE and pro wrestling, they have never been to WrestleMania. This will be the first time ever that they will be on a WrestleMania show. Judgment Day vowed they will watch Andrade's match next week. We had Candice and Indy versus Caden and Katana. So at this point, Indy is a babyface. Candice has turned full heel. And they did the deal where uh, Katana sold a knee injury, and the ref tries to pull everybody back to check on her. But Candice just drop kicks. Caden outside, wraps Katana's leg around the post, puts her in a crab and submits her. And Indy acts like she's appalled at this. But we'll see what they do with Indy. We had a Cody segment. You know, they were talking about the... uh, You know this uh, memo? So, not everybody got the memo. And I'm not saying that just because of Cody's uh, promo here, but I do know there are people in WWE, they never saw the memo about not swearing. And other people apparently did get the memo, but they're going to just do whatever they want to do. And Cody came out here, and I can't even, you know, I can't even recap a lot of his promo because he had at least three lines that I cannot say here on the radio, and none of them got bleeped, and it was their attempt to uh, to let him go full bore. This person says the memo was fake. Well. Dave insists that he's heard from several people that got the memo. So I'll just say that. But I watched his promo, and I was very skeptical, I will say that, of this memo. And other people there have told me they never saw a memo. So it is the memo is currently a mystery. Although, uh, you know, Dave did a big story on the memo, and WWE would have told him immediately if that story was fake, and they have not yet. So I don't know what the story is with the memo, but it's not as easy as the memo was fake. I think some people got the memo and some people did not, which actually sounds about right. If you watch, you can say what. But anyway, he uh, this this was an attempt to, you know, play on the Rock's level in terms of a promo. And nobody can, but I thought Cody did a very good job here. The place ate it up. He was a total baby face. And, uh, and that was that. Then Paul came out, and the storyline is on SmackDown – There will be a Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns face-to-face. And the story is, Roman has promised there will be no bloodline there. And he said, Cody, I promise, and so you need to show up with nobody. And so Cody agreed. And so, I mean, it's semantics. There's, There's two things. 
maybe no one will actually show up. Maybe Roman's guys will show up, and then Cody will show he's not an idiot, and his guys will be there as well, and we'll have a giant brawl. Maybe somebody will attack Cody. Somebody like uh, a new member of the bloodline, like a Tamatanga. So Roman, in fact, did not lie. Tamatanga, at that point, not a member of the bloodline. And then you could have uh, Cody beat Tama leading up to WrestleMania. But honestly, what I thought watching this show is that uh, Tama Tonga is going to interfere in the Jimmy versus Jay match, and he's going to cost Jay the match. And the reason I say that is because not all the baby faces can win at Mania. It's the first Jimmy J match in this feud. I think they've got more stuff that they can do. And I think that Jay needs to lose. And that's the way that you could do it. And also introduce Tama Tonga. So I guess we'll see. And uh, then we had a Sammy Gunther contract signing where uh, Chad Gable told Sammy, you can't beat this guy. And so uh, Sammy's got a lot to think about. We had a long Seth and Drew segment, which, uh, again, good. But, man, we had a lot of talking at that point. And then in the qualifying matches, we had New Day beating Otis and Tozawa. And we also had Miz and Truth beat Indu Share. And then the main event was uh, Nye and Becky. And I thought this was a very good match by the end. And I will say that uh, Nia went out of her way to take care of Becky Lynch. She tried so hard and... To the point where some of the cane shots and chair shots just, they looked outright fake. But hey, Becky's got a wrestle a big WrestleMania championship match coming up. And man, you better protect her. And, you know, the last time they had a match, it was not all that good. This one was significantly better. And Nia even repeated the spots that got botched in the last match, and she pulled them off in this match. So all credit to her. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. And to you, Mr. Khan, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khan. You're welcome. Thank you for believing in someone who left a guaranteed spotlight for something new. Someone who isn't always perfect, isn't always kind, but who is always determined to do her best. Renee Paquette. <laughs> thank you. And as for what's next, Anthony, come on, let's spoil your little surprise. Come on, I'm sick of alluding to her. Come on, I am sick of the cryptic hints, aren't we all? I don't care if it's a big business, I don't care if it's next week. Wendy Richter? I am going to fuck you up. And to anyone else who wants my title, you can fuck off. There's a ranking system now and you can bloody well use it. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, any questions from the media? Uh, tread lightly. And make it quick because if I don't leave soon, there's going to be piss all over the seat. <laughs> so, if you could. Um, Lyric Swinton, SNME Radio. You talked about the ranking system for your title. Um, how do you feel about your protege's um, current ranking on those rankings, Mariah May? I think she's doing just fine. Um, she's, she's doing great. I'm, I'm very proud. Doing a great job. But she's not quite ready. So um, let's not confuse her with those kinds of questions. Okay. Anyone else? Hi, Tony. So, as you alluded to before, Mariah May is obviously dressed as an older version of your character. So, was that your idea? Was that her idea? Ideas. Ideas. I said, didn't I? I said to Diana, I would give her the old Tony Storm and so much more. And here it is. Look at her. Look at her. Fantastic. Anyone else? Ideas come from so many places. Yes. Tony Stumeyer, Sports Guys Talking Wrestling. Have you talked to Susan Tex Green lately? 
No. Next question. <laughs> I believe we're done here this evening. Well, thank you, champ. Are we ready to get fucked up or what? Huh? Thanks, champ. Thank you, sir. Come here, bring it in, big man. I'm so, I love you. I love you. You're doing a fantastic job. In six to eight years, you're going to really blossom. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, darlings. Thanks, champ. Be good. Thank you very much. Stay safe. <coughs>